Live from Case at 12, the news at 530 starts right now. We begin tonight with that tragedy in Colorado Springs. At least five people are dead. Dozens more wounded after a shooting at an LGBTQ nightclub late last night. The shooter is in custody at the hospital after a crowd at the club took him down. He allegedly has a past of bomb and shooting threats. This all happening just before Transgender Remembrance Day, which is today. Our Alyssa Cole spoke with the Pride Center San Antonio leader about how the pain from this tragedy is being felt across the country and right here at home. The Pride community is mourning the loss of innocent lives from that overnight shooting. I spoke with the executive director of the Pride Center San Antonio. He says when he first learned of the shooting in Colorado Springs, the only word he could use to describe that incident is devastating. He says it's unfortunate to see increased violence against the LGBTQ plus community. I think it, it, investigations are important, um, but when we have a gunman coming into an LGBTQ nightclub, it's known to serve the LGBTQ plus community. There is no doubt in my mind uh, that it was rooted in hatred. It was rooted in uh, a, a want and a need to attack um, our community. Right now, we know that Colorado Springs police are in the early stages of the investigation and haven't found a motive for the shooting yet. But here back at home, the San Antonio Police Department released this statement saying, quote, SAPD is aware of this tragedy in Colorado. We are monitoring the situation and our fusion center will gather information and conduct local threat assessments, end quote. Coming up at 10, we learn more about Transgender Remembrance Day and how this shooting impacts the memorial. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Alyssa, thank you. Officials in Colorado have given an update into their investigation of that shooting earlier today. ABC's Zareen Shah brings us the horrific accounts from survivors who were inside that nightclub. A community now in mourning, remembering the victims of a mass shooting Saturday night at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. Initial evidence and interviews indicate that the suspect entered Club, club Q and immediately began shooting at people inside. The suspect has been identified as 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich. Law enforcement officials briefed on the investigation tell ABC News he is the same person arrested in a June 2021 bomb threat incident. At least two firearms were found at the scene. We are still working to identify the firearms and who they belong to, but I can confirm that the suspect used a long rifle during this shooting. Authorities praising the actions of some patrons. We know one or more patrons heroically intervened to subdue the suspect, and we praise those individuals who did so because their actions clearly saved lives. It was so scary. I heard shots, broken glass, bodies. Joshua Thurman says he was dancing when the shots rang out. It was, how, why? He says some of his friends were among those killed. This is the only LGBTQIA plus place in the entire city of Colorado Springs. What are we supposed to do? Where are we supposed to go? How are we supposed to feel safe? in our environment when it just got shot up. According to its website, Club Q hosts a weekly drag show on Saturday nights, but now the website says the club will be closed until further notice. <laughs> Authorities say the suspect is currently hospitalized. U.S. attorneys say the case is being investigated as a hate crime in addition to the murder charges. Zoreen Shah, ABC News Los Angeles. And President Biden issuing a statement today saying in part, quote, places that are supposed to be safe spaces of acceptance and celebration should never be turned into places of terror and violence. He added, we cannot and must not tolerate hate. Happening here at home, a driver is in custody tonight after police say they hit and killed a man who was walking along Loop 410. That crash happened just before midnight in the 5800 block of Northwest Loop 410. Officers say a 25 year old man was walking home after getting into an argument with his girlfriend. That's when someone driving on the highway hit him and didn't stop. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. The suspect was eventually arrested in the 5800 block of Stemmons. They are being charged with failure to stop and render aid. Tonight, San Antonio police are searching for the suspect in a shooting on the northwest side. That shooting happened around 545 this morning in the 6500 block of Babcock Road. SAPD says when officers got there, they found the man had been shot.
He was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition. Police say they haven't found that suspect yet. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is warning people of a scam where a person impersonates high ranking BCSO officials over the phone. According to Sheriff Javier Salazar, the scammers are telling people they missed court or jury duty and are threatening to arrest them. Then they tell the victims they can avoid jail by paying with credit cards, gift cards, payment apps, or getting cash and going somewhere to pay. BCSO says they will give names of high ranking officials to seem more realistic. The sheriff's office asking people to hang up and disregard those calls. Well, San Antonio children in need getting a fancy Thanksgiving celebration that they so deserve. This morning, Lena Duke, who owns Ruth Chris Steakhouse in La Cantera, hosted a Thanksgiving feast for Roy Moss Youth Alternative children in state care. 10 turkeys and over 250 pounds of mashed potatoes were served to about 100 children, as well as guests. Organizers wanted to help the children feel loved this holiday season. The event has been happening for 17 years now. And today, a local organization helped people experiencing homelessness in San Antonio. This morning at Travis Park Church, Corazon San Antonio held their Corazon Clinic. It included breakfast, showers, a medical clinic, as well as a coat giveaway for those without a home this holiday season. One of the organizers of the event says it's important to help people experiencing homelessness because some of them may not be in that situation by choice. Well, I think it's important that we have events like this for the community to show that we do care for our uh, people who are on the streets. Sometimes they're living there uh, totally uh, out of their control. We want to provide all the support we can to them. Another group also helped out with that event today. Icon I Can provided people with a Thanksgiving meal as well as some blankets. Still ahead on the news at 530, parts of New York State are continuing to see record snowfall. How many feet of snow have hit western New York so far? Plus, the new House GOP chairman says uh, he won't focus on the investigation into the documents found at Mar-a-Lago. The investigation he does plan to focus on next. The incoming GOP chair says the investigation into the classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago will not be a priority. Representative Jim Comer, likely the new chairman of the House Oversight Committee, does not expect Congress to continue that investigation. The Republican congressman from Kentucky said, quote, we're just waiting to see what comes out of that, unquote. Comer plans to turn his focus instead to the president's son, Hunter Biden, and wants the Treasury Department to turn over any of his suspicious banking activity reports. Heavy snow expected to keep piling up in western New York State through tonight. That's after a historic storm had the Buffalo area logging record snowfall, totaling more than six feet in some areas. Areas around Waterton, seen here on your screen, picked up more than 72 inches of snow, historic numbers for that region. Two people reportedly died of exertion trying to shovel heavy snow. The storm has also made travel in the region difficult, triggering road closures, driving bans, and flight cancellations the weekend before the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, just A lot of white stuff. Incredible scenes and yeah. views coming out of the northeast there. Now, it's been cold here in San Antonio, but not that cold. Gloomy skies still out there here this Sunday evening. Temperatures in San Antonio in the 40s. Now, as we head into the overnight hours, we are expecting the rain chances to increase, and that's going to take us into another cold and soggy start to the work week for our Monday. Temperatures right now, though, before we can get there in the 40s across south central Texas, we're pretty quiet on the radar, but I do anticipate that to change here over the next several hours. Again, even more so through the overnight hours tonight. We'll talk about those rain chances tomorrow, plus get you an early preview at what we're monitoring for Thanksgiving Day in just a few. Not that I was going to complain about being cold, but now that I've seen all that snow, I'm definitely yeah. not going to complain. <laughs> yeah, no, much worse. Yeah. Yes, it very much could be. Today, you know, has been a lot drier than what we saw yesterday. It still has been very cold out there, colder than the seasonal average. But as we head into our Monday, still cold out there, but we've got some additional rain chances to talk about. So overall, just right off the bat, planning off the day tomorrow as you're stepping out for the morning drive. Yes, take the coat with you. You will want 
want to bundle up, but also pack the umbrella because it likely is going to be a soggy start to the day for a good portion of San Antonio and South Central Texas. Then as we head into the afternoon hours, rain coverage is expected to come down. Still, though, some spotty light showers possible into Monday afternoon and evening. And with the added cloud cover and, of course, that rain cold air, it is still going to be another chilly day with temperatures likely confined to the 40s yet again for the first day of the upcoming work week. So we'll time all of it out. You can see we are pretty quiet in terms of the actual radar here in our region. There's some more rain, though, generally just off to our north in between San Antonio and Dallas, stretching along the I-35 corridor. There's an area of low pressure off to our northwest approaching the Texas Panhandle. That's our next disturbance that is going to slingshot some additional energy into our atmosphere here over the next 12 to 24 hours. And that combined with some additional moisture as what we will put together to make some of this rain. So we'll time this out here on your future cast again this evening after dinner time. A few isolated showers could start developing. And then as we head into the pre dawn hours of our Monday through the overnight coverage increases this activity generally streaming in from the southwest and pushing farther up to the northeast throughout the first half of the day. So this is morning drive time tomorrow. Yes, it could be a little messy and soggy in spots out there. So that is why you will want to pack the rain gear with you if stepping out. And then as we head into the afternoon, a few light showers possible, especially across the central reaches of the area. And then tomorrow night that coverage does come down, but a few isolated spots of light rain certainly possible. Some of that activity could linger into early Tuesday morning as well. So we will keep eyes on it in terms of rainfall potential and totals. Unfortunately, across our far western counties, likely not going to amount to a whole lot less than a quarter of an inch expected closer to the Rio Grande in between a quarter to half of an inch. And then here in the central and eastern reaches of our area, anywhere between half of an inch to even an inch of rain certainly possible before we dry things out throughout the second half of the day on Tuesday. Now yesterday, remember it was a soggy start officially here in San Antonio. We recorded just over half of an inch of rain. That brings our yearly total to date to just over 10 inches of rain. We are still at the top spot for the driest year to date, but not by much. So we'll see what we can pick up in the backyard rain gauges here over the next 36 hours to try and help us out just a little bit. Temperature wise, we'll start off in the low 40s here in San Antonio tomorrow morning, much like what we've seen over the past several days because of that cloud cover in place. Those temperatures don't fluctuate a whole lot throughout the day. So I think mid 40s, maybe a few upper 40s possible tomorrow <laughs> afternoon, but that's about it. We are expecting a warming trend, though, to take place in the days leading up to Thanksgiving. Speaking of which, another front does look to move in on Thursday. Still some questions on if we'll see any rain as of right now. It's looking fairly dry and then some sunshine looks to return by next weekend. Love it, but we do need that rain. Yes, so even do. though it's cold, we can we can deal with that. Thank you, Mia. All right, Larry, the Roadrunners are ranked again. Yeah, they just missed out on the AP poll, but they're back in the coaches poll for the first time since last November, early December. And this is Coach Trailer getting the heck out of the way because he did not want to be dashed with that cold ice bucket. Plus, UIW football. Well, you know what? They have a first round bye and their excellent season is continuing coming up. UTSA dominated Rice yesterday afternoon, 41 to 7 for the Roadrunners eighth straight win. And now they are ranked number 25 in the USA Today Sports AFCA coaches poll. They just missed out on the AP top 25 with 85 points, two behind number 25 UCF. So UTSA is 9 and 2 overall, 7 and 0 in Conference USA this season, wrapping up the CUSA regular season championship for the second straight campaign. Quarterback Frank Harris accounted for five total touchdowns, three on the air on the ground, I should say, and two in the air. But the run of the game goes to head coach Jeff Trailer, who took off for the corner of the end zone immediately at the end of regulation to avoid the ice bath from his players. They would eventually catch him, surround him, and dump some ice on him. But coach, well, he was ready. That was, what is that, uh, fight or flight? I did both. Uh, it was flight at first, and then I got cornered. And there was like eight of them. 
So then I went to tag. JJ's got video evidence of this. <laughs> and I just grabbed the cooler and just pulled it down. And see, my feet got totally soaked. But what they don't realize, see, I'm a I'm veteran. Wow. Trades, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Good to go, boys. Good to go. They didn't get me. They didn't get me. Good to go. The Roadrunners have clinched the right to host the CUSA championship game for the second straight year, and that will go down Friday, December the 2nd at the Alamo Dome versus either North Texas or Western Kentucky. Now, this was the scene in the corner word this morning when the Cardinals learned that they would enter the FCS playoffs as the number seven seed, and they also earn a first round by. This is the highest UIW has ever been ranked in the playoffs. The Cardinals are 10 1 overall this season and back to back Southland Conference champs. Even with the resume, the Cardinals were anxious to see and hear their names called. I was dropping a little bit and then, you know, um, getting called out, you know, it was great seeing everybody cheer and stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, blessed to be in a position, blessed to have this team and, you know, these coaches and uh, excited to get to work. It's huge um, getting to play at home, getting a bye. Uh, it would be great for our, for our guys to get a home playoff game is always big. And then I thought the, uh, the way the bracket played out was, was good for us. Analysts mentioned that the Cardinals are a team to look out for in these playoffs. They will host either Elon or Furman in the second round of the playoffs at Benson Stadium on Saturday, December 3rd. For the first time since 2002, Trinity football has advanced to the second round of the Division III playoffs. The Tigers used a second half rally to defeat Harden Simmons at home yesterday, 14 to 7. Wide receiver Ryan Merrifield was a beast catching six passes for 110 yards, including the game winning 38 yard touchdown in the fourth quarter. The Tigers trailed at halftime for the first time this season, but they never doubted their ability to win the game. Always focus on the sideline. We don't let our highs get too high, lows get too low. Uh, we always just stay, uh, stay steady and yeah, keep working no matter what. It's incredible, and this goes back to, again, 2014, um, getting the support from the school to, to try to put things back together in the modern day of Trinity um, from our alums who supported us at an unreal level so we could get this great stadium, the scoreboard, um, to be able to take care of our guys daily the way we do. Um, again, this is a true Trinity football family effort and this, this game is a culmination of a lot of things. The Tigers next face the defending national champs, Mary Hart and Baylor. The Crusaders defeated Trinity in the first round of the playoffs last year, 13-3. The Harlan Hawks are one of two Class 6A teams from the San Antonio area left alive in the playoffs. Harlan steamrolled West Laco East in the area around yesterday afternoon, 49-3. It's the team's eighth straight win. And thank you to Harlan for allowing us to use some of their footage from the contest, including this awesome touchdown catch from junior ride receiver Isaiah Manchester. The Hawks advance to face Vandergriff in the third round next Friday in the Alamo Dome at 7.30 p.m. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans looking to snap a four-game losing streak at home against the Washington Commanders today, and it's not going to happen. First quarter, Davis Mills throws, and Kendall Fuller intercepts the ball, and that will go down as a 37-yard pick six and a 7-0 Commanders lead. That happened on the Texans' second offensive snap in the game and was all downhill from there. Mills was picked off twice and also sacked five times. He did score on a four-yard touchdown run late in the fourth quarter, but the Commanders beat the Texans. 23-10, improving to 6-5. Now the Cowboys are playing the Vikings right now as we speak, and the boys are up 37-3 in the third quarter. We'll have more tonight on Instant Replay. The Clippers beat the Spurs last night 119-97 to keep San Antonio winless on its current West Coast trip. Thanks to hot three-point shooting, the Clippers led from start to finish and by as many as 30 points in the fourth quarter, L.A. made a season-high 21 three-pointers. Yeah, they came out firing. Um, this was one of those games. Uh, we try to answer um, and just slowly chip away at the lead. Um, usually when a team's shooting like that, you know, at some point um, shots start to not fall. Um, we can, you know, slowly get back into it. But, you know, they just kept uh, making plays and, hit, and hitting those threes tonight. Spurs will try to end their four game slide tonight at 830 at the four and 10 LA Lakers. The Lakers have a worse record than the Spurs and you know that probably makes a lot of Spurs fans very happy. Well, let's just hope it's not raining threes in LA again today. Larry. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back.
47 this hour here in San Antonio, 46 in Uvalde, and 42 up in Kerrville. It will be chilly for stepping out for any evening plans, and we are expecting another cold day, especially tomorrow to kick off our work week. And of course, a soggy start for a good portion of the area tomorrow morning. A few isolated showers lingering into early Tuesday, and then we'll monitor a warming trend all the way up to about Thanksgiving, guys. Oh, we got a new dancing turkey. Yeah, bring the twerking turkey. That's what we want to say. That's all our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for the night beat at 10 and possibly a twerking turkey. <laughs>